Today's episode is gonna be all about biometric hardware. I thought this would be important because I haven't really talked about any of the biometric hardware that's actually required to be successful inside of this series yet at all. And second, it's just way too cold outside today to do anything else. So for uh, any of my Facebook friends or anybody that just likes these for the cool music or clips, uh, you may want to tune out right about. So there's another reason why this topic's actually pretty timely. A couple weeks ago, there was a pretty big announcement in the biometric industry uh, from one of the probably the largest and most popular biometric vendors that most people would have heard of. It's called, called Bioscript or a lot of people know them as Morpho. And they just announced, ah, they just announced that this guy here, uh, the 4G Flex, probably the most uh, important and popular biometric reader that any data center or other customer would have used in the past is officially end of life. This announcement's really been a long time coming. Now that it's official, it's gonna leave a lot of customers, data centers, and others wondering how to move forward with biometric access control. So one of the things that I wanted to do was introduce to you a new product from us that I believe to be the best replacement for the 4G Flex. Okay, so this is the BioEntry W2. I'll show you what it looks like. So the first thing that you're gonna notice is purely aesthetic. Uh, this device compared to the old 4G Flexes look and feel a lot different. Uh, and just the fact of how this actually looks plays a large role inside of the data center, uh, especially for co-locations where they're using these products as sales tools to help secure customers. Uh, the second piece is just footprint. So you'll notice that this is about maybe half the size of the device. What that allows in the data center space is this device can be installed in many, many, many more areas. So we're starting to see a lot of customers actually deploy these on cages and cabinets inside of the data center. With this device, that's quite challenging. If you look at just what the footprint looks like, a couple other things about this device. At number one, it has a multi-class read head. What that means is it can, read, it can read high frequency and low frequency cards. And it allows you as a customer to transition transition from low frequency to high frequency and uh, knowing that you've invested in technology that supports both. A uh, second piece, I'll show you this more in detail in a moment, but it's just the fingerprint sensor that we're using. The fingerprint sensor is lightning, lightning fast and extremely reliable. It's specifically been made to actually target very wet fingers and very dry fingers. Uh, and then lastly, uh, this is IK08 and IP67 rated. So extremely versatile. It can go indoors, outdoors. I thought it would be pretty much unfair to actually compare the performance of these two devices. And just given the fact that this one is like maybe 10 years old and this one is brand new. So what I'm gonna do is just go ahead and show you three practical tests of this device in action. I love you. I'm gonna do three tests, so fingerprint only matching, uh, dual factor card plus finger matching using this corporate uh, 1000 35-bit I-Class card, and then just general failure. So this is fingerprint only matching. Uh, you're gonna see it's lightning fast, just about as soon as I actually touch the sensor, it's actually gone ahead and verified. The other thing that you're gonna see is I can really just place my finger on a severe angle and still find success. And this is extremely important because it allows for the human to walk up, slap their finger down in their busy day, and still find success with the technology. So the first thing you're gonna notice when it comes to card plus finger matching is just how fast it can actually read that, read that badge. And again, from how far it can read the badge. You can notice that I don't have to get very close to the device to actually be able to gain success. So the last piece is just general failure. Why am I showing you what it looks like when it fails? Uh, it's because it's inevitable that someone is going to fail on the device. But what's important is how quickly we're able to actually make that rejection and get that information back. So you'll see that the user knows immediately and is able to actually course correct, find success with the device and get through the door. I hope you, I love you. I, I love you. 